Hi, uh, in the last few weeks, uh, I talk about uh, right now we are in the age of data and how important it is. I don't need okay, to explain further detail about uh, the data and uh, digital transformation is a very important process to generate more data uh, to meet the demand uh, from the market. Uh, as a result, a lot of the industry are undergoing what we call the digital transformation or digitalization. So one of the uh, important sector we are talking about the governments uh, and digital government is always a very hot topic. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, I would like to share uh, our idea about digital government, uh, what is our understanding and also the technology myth behind the digital government and also, we are going to share some of the explorations and practice as a digital government uh, based on the uh, H3C understanding in the market uh, during the last five to 10 years uh, about our digital solutions that deployed in the government market. So to start with, uh, we uh, have to understand, okay, what is digital government? Uh, before we start, right, uh, just to share with you uh, two of the statistics uh, or the result from two uh, very uh, well-known uh, research company, uh, McKinsey and also uh, IDC. Uh, actually, they are forecasting like uh, just in China alone uh, by 2030, uh, the digitalization, this process or this uh, business uh, ecosystem is going to generate 45% uh, of the total industry revenue. Well, all kinds of industry like the government, manufacturing, transportation, whatever. So uh, this process is not just say, okay, uh, you put money and then you make it digitalized. Okay, all your process, uh, your ecosystem, but uh, it will generate uh, some of the GDP value, uh, which can uh, contribute, okay, to the actual economy, hiring people, generating new product, new solutions, okay, stimulate the economy. Of course, uh, the global GDP also is driven by the digitalization by means of like uh, the connectivity, uh, the cloudization, uh, big data, AI, and uh, some kind of a security, okay, in the infrastructure. So actually there are two part application and also the ICT infra as I explained. So here uh, to talk about the digital government, right? So a lot of people will think about smart city. So uh, don't be confused. Uh, uh, actually, digital government, from our understanding, okay, is a carrier. That means, okay, the digital government can drive like uh, the smart city planning, whatever. And smart city is a very great concept, okay, to uh, let the government to become more digitalized or undergoing the digital transformation. So in the smart city 1.0, okay, per our understanding, is more like a policy driven. So. Uh, if a government, they want to deploy a policy or maybe uh, getting the tax payment, okay, from uh, the internet or apply your driving license, okay, uh, from the web. Uh, so it is like uh, just in case a single application, a single process. So in the very beginning, the smart city concept uh, is quite uh, preliminary and fundamentals and based on like a policy driven. Uh, that is what uh, we per uh, perceive. When we move okay, to Smart City uh, 2.0, uh, most of the government want to drive okay, the city management uh, more like an application base, not just a policy, because uh, when you apply like uh, your driving license, uh, it's just a single policy, but it should be related to the whole transportation ecosystem. How I derive uh, uh, a smart application in terms of transportation because uh, I should link together with like uh, the, the parking system, uh, uh, the illegal parking uh, penalties, uh, your car license, okay, extensions. Uh, how, how do I check, okay, your, uh, uh, your car, whether it's still under um, insurance or not? Do you have any uh, fine ticket not paid? So uh, we are moving from the policy driven to more uh, application driven. Uh, in terms of a particular sector. Likely, we are also talking about smart education. Uh, we don't want, okay, just to drive, okay, one single policy and create a system. 
and how we make okay, the whole platform, uh, whole system more meaningful. So that's why in the smart city 2.0, a uh, number of government talking about the PPP mode, uh, pirate and public uh, partnership. So what is why this concept coming out okay in the smart city 2.0? Because um, government, they are not the expert in driving applications. And somehow private sector, they understand more markets. They understand more, okay, the customer requirement. As a result, okay, this kind of a cooperation is very, very popular in the smart city 2.0 uh, that uh, a lot of government uh, was driven during that time. And nowadays, uh, some of the government, I cannot say most, uh, mm, they are moving okay to the concept talking about the smart city 3.0. Other than like uh, more application driven, uh, as I said, the age of data okay, has come already. The people are moving okay to be more like a data driven. What does it mean? It means like uh, we are emphasizing on the data governance and the data mining. That means when we have the smart city 2.0, more smart application inside, then a lot of the data will be stored and also, okay, all this data can undergoing the process of like a uh, data mining. And then uh, how uh, after, okay, our AI and some of the new technology, uh, edge computing or whatever coming out, we can analyze the data and then we can generate the new demand from the market based on the data we have. Uh, actually, a lot of the users may not be aware about their lead and demand. Somehow, okay, through the data-driven process, we can analyze and then we can forecast and predict, okay, what they need and then we can provide, okay, the just-in-time solutions or the new product that can meet their requirements. So uh, just like I mentioned, digital government is a carrier. So no matter this is, a, you are talking about smart city or digital economy, everything, okay, need to be starting from a digital government driver. So digital government from a HVC perspective, our concept is okay, just like in this diagram. When a digital government try to deploy a smart city 1.0, and then actually the purpose is to improving people's uh, livelihood, improving okay, their daily lives, create more convenience. And then the government, okay, under the Smart City 1.0, they are trying to optimize okay, their governance, how to uh, convey the messages, how to provide the support to the citizens easily. And also they want to do some kind of an industry okay, convergence and how this uh, policy can benefit to the industry. At the same time, uh, you can imagine uh, the industry, uh, no matter the people, whatever, right? They are going to create something to bring more like a digital economy. In the digital economy, normally, okay, from the industry perspective, right? They will drive the government to think more about, say, uh, do we need to employ or deploy like uh, some kind of like a smart uh, education, smart transportation, okay? Were, which tie with some of the business driver from the digital economy. So this thing, Smart City 2.0 happened and then um, improve okay, the people's uh, livelihood again, and then uh, more <coughs> optimize the governance. So this is like a cycle or what you call an ecosystem uh, that can self improve okay, by itself. Uh, the key point is, okay, how the digital government uh, take the digital economy uh, advantages and then, okay, maybe from the tax paying, getting the money and then start improving, okay, their governance by driving another smart city uh, uh, version, maybe going to 4.0 or 5.0. Uh, so here, just uh, sharing about uh, our experience because at H3C, we did quite a number of like a project in China. Mm helping like uh, the provincial government to undergo the digitalization. Normally, uh, the digitalization of a government uh, need to be a top-down method. Normally, okay, we should start okay, to advise uh, the government to build the team. Mm. And then most importantly, we need to define the responsibility. After build the team and define the responsibility, 
of course, uh, we need to make the plan and carry out the digital government top level design, what you want to achieve, how you want to achieve. And then uh, talking about the joint constructions, okay, how you're getting the resources, uh, just like I mentioned, it's a PPP project or other means, okay, to form, uh, uh, to drive this project. And finally, and most importantly, it's about the continuous operations of the whole digital government concept. When we bring okay, these uh, digital government constructions, right? Uh, of course, uh, HVC is a technology company. I would like to explain, okay, in a block diagram, uh, normally how the digital government form and what is the kinetic energy to drive, okay, the social development. Don't make it very complicated. Imagine um, the technology is just like uh, the old Chinese type of medicine box, right? You got so many different medicine, uh, the small box, right? And then as a digital government, what you want to drive, what you want to promote uh, based on your real requirement, maybe some uh, government, uh, they want, okay, to explore like, uh, in the energy sector because uh, they are maybe, uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, raw material uh, like uh, electro gas, like uh, petroleum or whatever, right? Then they may think about like uh, the smart energy deployment and to drive the digital economy from that perspective. Uh, at that time, they may need to take different okay, technology. Of course, uh, some government, they want to put more emphasis on the health or uh, educations, maybe like uh, community services, maybe like uh, 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 create some kind of a social credit, uh, water management, all these kinds of applications or whatever, right, can be run on the digital platform. And all these, okay, based on your need, okay, and then to drive. And at the same time, uh, when you build your infra, under the Smart City 3.0 concept, with the digital infrastructure and the smart infra, uh, you can base on this to generate more data and then become a data-driven uh, uh, architecture. And under this, you can drive more like a new product and solutions on top and then fit into the like a city service uh, requirement, the city governance expectations, and also the industry conventions uh, to help and driving the digital economy. So uh, this is about the basic understanding of the digital government that I would like to share today. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.